Well, uh, we can get started. So welcome to lesson seven, index of refraction. Um, recall from yesterday that when we're talking about light bending, we're talking about refraction. The idea being that as light moves from one substance or one medium into another, the speed of light changes. It either gets faster or slower. And based off of that speed change, we see what's called refraction, that bending of light, which is caused by the changing of speed as it travels through different substances. Optically dense materials will slow down the light more than less dense materials. Assume air is the least optically dense material that we're going to encounter. Uh, when you get to higher level physics, you can start to look at vacuums and what those provide. But for now, we're just going to use air as the lowest index of refraction, meaning it is the least dense, meaning that light will travel through it very quickly. So we can quantify these and calculate the speed of light in different substances using what's called the index of refraction. So if you recall from yesterday, when we looked at sine i over sine r, right there, we calculated that ratio. And a lot of you were like, well, Mr. Q, what the heck does that mean? Well, now I'm putting it into context for you with regards to that definition of it. It gives us what's called the index of refraction. It tells us how dense or not dense that medium is. So when we look at the values or the variables that we'll be encountering in this equation, I is the angle of incidence, which we can determine based off of our initial measurements from yesterday's lab. Same thing with the angle of refraction, right? Angle of refraction, how far the, the light moves towards or away from that normal based off of that change in speed. C is the speed of light in a vacuum, which is a constant. It's never going to change. It will always be the same. And it will always be uh, 3.0 times 10 to the exponent of 8. And then V, the speed of light in that substance. Okay, so this is the big reason why we learned yesterday's ratios. It's because it will allow for us to calculate one of those three variables that I just highlighted. On my right here in table one, we look at what's called the index of refraction of different mediums. Like I said earlier, air is the least dense and has the lowest index of refraction. Diamond is the most dense and has the highest index of refraction. So you'll start to see a little bit of a pattern arise here as we look at each of the different mediums and their index of refractions. You'll start to get a feel for how they behave, how light behaves once it travels from air into water, for example, or air into oil, or air into glass, or acrylic, or olive oil, or what have you, okay? Because it kind of has similar properties, or it kind of does the same thing, I guess, moving from air into that one different type of medium. It will never be a different reaction, but we don't really need to worry about that too much right now. Okay, so... How do we utilize this? How do we put it into practice? What good is it, if you will? So recall, scientific notation notation can be used for very large or very small numbers. When I talked about the speed of light, I described it as uh, its speed being as 3.00 times 10 to the exponent of 8 meters per second. What this number actually is, is 300 million meters per second. Okay, so 300 million meters per second. But that's a really big number to write. And in science, we really want to practice, <coughs> excuse me, holy allergy season. We really want to practice uh, utilizing this scientific notation. There's some practice. Thank you, Jaira. There's some, um, oh, thank you, Maria. Everyone's saying gesundheit to me. Uh, so, <laughs> so the uh, other way that we can describe this is using what's called scientific notation. My hope is that you've seen that last year in grade nine. There is some practice below, but if you take note, when we talk about scientific notation, 3 times 10 to the exponent of 8, that exponent of 8, if you count up those zeros, if you count up those zeros in 300 million, there's eight zeros. So that's kind of how scientific notation works. The exponent is the number of zeros that precedes the number in, on the left of that little statement. But regardless, let's take a look at this first example, and let's see if we can utilize and understand how these equations and how this specific, um, because there's two equations here, right? The one that I highlighted in orange and the one that I highlighted in black. 
n, we are able to solve n with the angle of incidence or the and the angle of refraction. Or we can solve n using the speed of light in another substance as well as the speed of light in a vacuum. So let's take a look at this example question and let's see how we do, shall we? So the speed of light in a sample of glass is 1.91 times 10 to the eighth exponent meters per second. The speed of light in a vacuum is 3.0 times 10 to the exponent of eight meters per second. What is the refractive index of the glass? So we're looking for that index of refraction, that n value. And we've been given the speed of, whoop, we've been given the speed of light in that sample of glass as 1.91 times 10 to the exponent of 8 meters per second, as well as that constant of the speed of light in a vacuum, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So what are we trying to solve for here? Well, we are required to solve for that value of n. We're required to solve for that refractive index of glass. So which of the two equations do we need to use? Sine i over sine r equals n, or n is equal to c over v. And I kind of gave it away there. It's n is equal to c over v. And, and the reason we choose this equation is because nowhere in that question did I say anything about angle of incidence, angle of refraction. OK, you'll see in the next type of question that that comes up. But we are going to utilize for our analysis component the equation of n, or refractive index of glass, or refractive index of any substance, is equal to the constant speed of light divided by the speed of light in that medium. So in order to solve, we divide 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over 1.91 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we solve n as being 1.57. And so our final statement is the index of refraction of glass is 1.57. And if you scroll up just a bit, we already knew that. Okay, it's 1.52 here, but again, calculation based, there's going to be some standard error. There's going to be some analysis mistakes potentially, but our calculations state that that is uh, the index of refraction of glass is 1.57. So also, if you noticed, I use what's called the GRASS method, given required analysis solution statement, G-R-A-S-S. If you've never used that before and you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're showing me all your steps, I'm fine with that. So this is one example where we're trying to solve for the refractive index of a substance, in this case glass, using the speed of light in a vacuum, that constant, as well as the speed of light in that sample. Let's try an example where the speed of light in water is the thing we're trying to solve for. So what is the speed of light in water, given that water has an index of refraction of 1.33? So speed of light in water is what we're trying to solve for. And we've been given the n value, or that index of refraction, of 1.33 of water. We know the constant speed of light in a vacuum is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we're trying to solve for the velocity of light in water. So our analysis component, we're going to rearrange that equation up above to solve for v. And again, if you want to know how to solve for an unknown variable, just kind of cover up that variable. In this case, I'll white it out. v is solved by dividing c by n. If I wanted to solve for c, I multiply n by v. If I wanted to solve for n, I divide c by v. So it's a nice little way for you to look at that triangle, that equation triangle, which I'm sure you've seen a million times, and determine which variable you're trying to solve for and utilize that proper equation. So like I said, in this example, we're trying to solve for the speed of light in water, given that water has an index of refraction of 1.33. So our analysis component or our solution component, uh-oh, our solution component to solve for velocity we divide the speed of light as a constant by that index of refraction, and it gives us the value 2.25 times 10 to the exponent of 8 meters per second. So the speed of light in water is 2.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, different calculators will do things differently. Uh, my calculator 
gives I can set it so that it gives it to me in uh, scientific notation. If you're not sure how to do it, usually you can just plug in that value as 300 million divided by 1.33 and you'll get 225 million, right? And so as long as you have that 10 to the exponent of eight, you'll be in good shape. Put the first three numbers, that 2.25 comes from the 225 million and that helps you to put in scientific notation. And I have some practice down below as well for those of you who would like to practice. Uh, so that ends the portion of my lesson component. If you have questions, I look forward to answering them.